Hello everyone, today we are talking about the regulation of blood glucose levels. So, a good place to start is with homeostasis. Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant, stable internal conditions. Now, in order for this to happen, the body has to be able to detect a change and activate measures to counter this change. So, for example, if our internal or external detectors, our skin and our hypothalamus, detect an increase in temperature, our body does everything it can to reduce the temperature back down again to maintain these nice, stable conditions. Why do we have to do this? What's so bad about conditions fluctuating? Well, let's stick with the enzyme example for a moment. Temperatures above a certain point are going to denature your enzyme. It's going to change that active site. And as you can see from the diagram, the enzyme will no longer fit the substrate. So that enzyme is now useless. It doesn't work anymore. And given that most of the metabolic functions of life are regulated by enzymes, it's a really bad idea to start um, messing with the active sites of those enzymes. It would result in death. And so it's really super important that the temperature stays fairly constant. If the temperature stays constant, the enzymes work, metabolism works fine, and you stay alive. If it goes too far out of whack, you die. And you know this. If you go above about 42, 43 degrees C, you're going to die. Um, and also, on the other side, if it gets too cold, then the enzyme substrate collisions aren't going to happen so often. And um, again, that's going to result in a similar fate. The control centre for blood glucose is the pancreas. And inside the pancreas, there are areas called the islets of Langerhan. And these contain beta cells. Beta cells produce and secrete insulin. There are also things called alpha cells, which produce a hormone that you might not have heard of called glucagon. Let's talk about what happens when you eat a donut. After consuming the delicious simple sugars in the donut, your blood sugar levels are going to skyrocket. Now, this is not those nice, stable internal conditions that we spoke about earlier. This is a massive fluctuation and your body does not like it very much. So it has to bring it back to a state of equilibrium. And it does this by releasing insulin from the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. This causes glucose to be removed from the blood. Glucose is taken out of the blood and stored in the liver and the skeletal muscles. And it's stored as a molecule called glycogen. And because blood glucose has been taken or glucose is being taken out of the blood and stored in the cells, your blood glucose levels drop. Here's a diagram that shows you the formation of glycogen from the individual glucose monomer. So that hexagon you can see there at the top there, uh, top left, that's a single glucose molecule. And when you stick them together into a large polymer molecule, you get glycogen. So glycogen is an energy reserve. It's a stored version of glucose. Um, there's a lot of words here that sound the same. Glucose, glycogen, glucagon. The, that's one of the most challenging parts of this topic. Make sure you don't get them confused. Let's have a little look at what happens if you decide to do some fasting or you decide to go and do some very strenuous exercise. So in these conditions, your blood glucose levels drop. The pancreas stops secreting insulin and starts producing a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon causes the breakdown of glycogen in the liver, so it snaps all those glucose apart in the liver and muscles and puts that sugar back into your blood and glucose levels start to rise. Glucose and insulin are said to be antagonistic hormones. What does that mean? It means that their actions are opposite. Um, you might have heard this term in relation to antagonistic muscle pairs like the bicep and the tricep. They work against each other. They have opposite effects. Insulin causes a drop in blood sugar. Glucagon causes a rise in blood sugar. So they have opposite effects. They are antagonistic hormones. This graph nicely shows a principle called negative feedback. This is where a change causes a response to oppose the change. So if blood sugar levels too high the body does what it can to lower it. And when it drops below a set point, the body does the opposite, does what it can to bring it back up again. So it's always trying to counter what's happening. Blood sugar levels, if this is functioning properly, should stay fairly close around a nice set point. Now, negative feedback is a fundamental concept in homeostasis. It's how our bodies maintain this nice, stable internal state. Now, let's talk about diabetes for a minute. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Uh, basically, your body attacks itself. 
um, your body's immune system attacks its own cells. Um, people with type 1 diabetes, the immune system attacks the healthy tissues. It attacks those islets of Langerhans, those beta cells, and the ins insulin secreting cells of the pancreas don't function anymore. So a type 1 diabetic can't produce and secrete insulin. In type 2 diabetes, a person's body cells can't respond to insulin anymore. They still produce it. The, the pancreas is throwing out insulin perfectly nicely, but the cells just can't hear it anymore. They're not sensitive to it anymore. Um, an analogy I like to use is to think of having a really loud noise around you all the time. And eventually you're going to go deaf. Too much loud noise all the time, chronically, every single day, you're going to go deaf and you won't hear the noise anymore. Well, if your diet is garbage, and you have high blood glucose levels all the time, then your cells are going to become deaf to insulin and they won't do what they should. Type 2 diabetes is more common in older people and it can be regulated by a carbohydrate controlled diet and a nice exercise regime. There are a ton of problems caused by long term chronic high blood glucose levels or hyperglycemia. And here is a list of some of them. This graph shows an increasing number of cases of type 2 diabetes over time. And I'm afraid it's not just cakes and soda. It's uh, the amount of hidden sugar in our foods. This hidden sugar contributes to a pandemic of non-pathogenic disease. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC in America, has stated that more than 100 million US adults are now living with diabetes or pre-diabetes. There need to be stricter controls on food maintenance and taxing higher sugar products would really help in the fight against this disease. So there we are, ladies and gents, that's a very, very quick run through of uh, type 1, type 2 diabetes and the control of blood sugar levels. Have a go at these questions, pause the video, see if you can do them and then unpause, flick onto the next screen and mark it, see how you did. Hope that helps. Thanks very much. Bye bye.